Hey friends, I'm so glad that you're here for our epic adventures of God's people in the wilderness. Today, we're going to learn about more spies. Let's start today off with a different kind of hide and seek game. There are going to be three different coconuts that mix up on the screen. Um, there will be two with fruit under it and one with a bird under it. The goal of the game is to correctly guess which coconut has the bird under it after they've all been mixed up. You ready to play? What's it like to take a risk? It's sometimes hard to decide because you don't know what's going to happen next. But when God is in the picture, we don't have to worry. Last week we learned to trust God. And when we trust God, a risk for God is worth it. Today's big idea is, I can take risks for God. Hi there, you little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And this week, it's going to be epic. We got some exciting stuff happening, so get ready. Welcome to Grow TV. Introducing your host, Carl. And your co host, Cassie. Where we learn, where we grow, and we talk about Jesus. Once again, welcome to Grow TV. Well, welcome. I sure did miss you guys, like a lot. <laughs> the past week I've done a lot of reading. I read a story in the Bible that you wouldn't believe. There was action. There was secrecy. I have a secret. <laughs> and there was triumph. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I won. <laughs> you love me. You really love me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah! Yes! Yeah! I'm telling you, the story had it all, and it got me excited. Because this week's series is all about epic. And if I had one word to describe the story I read, <laughs> it would be epic. Hey, Carl. Hey, Cassie. I was just talking about this week's story. What's the story? <laughs> oh, man. It was great. It was the ultimate superhero story. A classic feel-good action drama. There's this lady named Rahab, right? And this lady made a lot of bad choices in her life. And outside the city, Joshua gathered two Israelite men who would sneak into Jericho and spy on the city. Why would they do that? Well, because God told them to. Okay, keep going. This is a good story so far. <laughs> it really is. So the spies snuck into the city, and when it became nighttime, they went to Rahab's house to spend the night. Was Rahab an Israelite? Nope. She didn't know the spies, but she did let them stay. But someone did see the spies go into her house, so they told the king of Jericho that the spies were hiding in Rahab's house. Oh no, she's gonna get in trouble. Yep, so in the morning, the officials went to her house, knocking on the door looking for the spies. What did Rahab do? Well, when Rahab found out that the king knew, she hid the spies on the roof and told the officials, yeah, they were here, but they left. Well, that was a close one, but it's actually kind of cool, because she probably saved their lives. She sure did. 
So Rahab let the spies escape through her window, but before they went, she only asked one thing. What did she ask? She asked if they would save her and her family when the Israelites took over Jericho. The spies said yes and told her to tie a scarlet ribbon outside her window. This would be a reminder of their promise to her and a symbol of her family being saved. Wow, that is a great story. So what do you think the lesson to be learned is? Are you serious? <laughs> that was obvious. Ha, I'm gonna become a superhero. Wait, what? I'm gonna be a superhero. The most epic superhero ever. How did you come to that conclusion? Pretty simple. Rahab was a person who made a lot of bad choices. Right. And then when she saw the opportunity to help someone, she did. And she risked her life and the life of others to do the right thing. And guess what? What? So I was reading the Bible today, and in Hebrews 11, there's a thing called the Hall of Faith. It's like the Hall of Fame, but for people who obey God. Okay, who was in the Hall of Faith? Well, Moses, Nehemiah, Noah, Ruth, Abraham, and guess who else? Batman? No, but that would be cool. It was Rahab. Really? Yep, that's even more confirmation that I'm destined to be a hero, save the innocent, and take risks so I too can be in the Hall of Faith. Wow, that seems like a pretty big dream. I know, but that's what God has called me to do. Is it though? I think so. I don't know, Carl. I think God is calling us to do something else. Well, what do you mean? I just think God has a pretty simple plan for us. Do you remember last week's big idea? You mean I can trust God? Yep. Why do you think Rahab risked her life to save those spies? I don't know. Maybe she wanted to be in the Hall of Faith? She wanted to be admired as a superhero who saves people? Nope. Rahab did that because she realized God is real, and she wanted to put her trust in God that day. She realized that taking a risk for God is a risk worth taking. Wow! I never thought about it like that before. So you're saying I need to take risk for God? Yep, we will often be faced with situations that require us to take risks, to do things that are tough or scary. But it's okay, because if God asks us to do something, we know God will be with us. Things are tough and scary, huh? Will a skydiving count as taking a risk for God? I don't think so. What about going up behind a horse and pinching it? Definitely not. What about drinking chunky lemon milk that's been in the fridge for four months? That's taking a risk, right? Definitely a risk, but not one for God. All right. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I think the story of Rahab is a really good example of what someone should be willing to do if they love God. Just like if we had a friend at school that might be in trouble, we know we would help them, even if it meant we would get in trouble. You're right. I can still be an epic superhero, as long as I take risks for God. Whoa, Mr. Hall of Faith. I think you just said something pretty epic. Wait, that's our big idea! Today's big idea is, I can take risks for God. So on the count of three, we're all gonna shout our big idea. Ready? Ready. One, two, three. I can take risks for God! Alright! Good job! We did it, everyone! Huzzah! This was a fun story. <laughs> it sure was. Now I'm gonna go and practice my superhero catchphrases in the mirror. Have a good one. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Bro TV! Joshua 2, 1 through 15 says, then Joshua secretly sent out two spies from the Israelite camp at Acacia Grove. He instructed them, scout out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. So the two men set out and came to the house of the prostitute named Rahab and stayed there the night. But someone told the king of Jericho, some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab. Bring out the men who have come into your house, for they have come here to spy out the whole land. Rahab had hidden the two men, but she replied, Yes, the men were here earlier, but I didn't know where they were from. They left the town at dusk, and the gates were about to close. I didn't know where they went, and if you hurry, you can probably catch up with them. Actually, she had taken them up onto the roof and hidden them beneath the bundles of flax she had laid out. So the king's men went looking for the spies along the road leading to the shallow crossings of the Jordan River. And as soon as the king's men had left, the gate to Jericho was shut. Before the spies went to sleep that night, Rahab went up to the roof and talked with them. I know that the Lord has given you this land, she told them. We are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. For we have heard how the Lord has made dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did in Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings of the east of the Jordan River, 
whose people you completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has courage to fight after hearing such things, for the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above the earth below. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee that when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all their families. We offer our own lives as guarantee for your safety, the men agreed. If you don't betray us, we will keep our promise and be kind to you when the Lord gives us the land. Since Then, since Rahab's house was built into the town wall, she let them down by a rope through the window. In today's Bible reading, there's a lot of risk taking happening. The two spies from Israel took a huge risk for God by sneaking into Jericho. Something terrible could have happened to them if they were caught by the king of Jericho. But they did it anyway, because they knew that their job of spying on the land was a very important one. Rahab also took a big risk for God by hiding the spies from the king of Jericho. She could have turned them in, and she probably would have been rewarded for it. It would have been a much safer choice. But somehow, she knew that God was about to give Jericho over to the Israelites, and she wanted to do what was right in God's eyes. Taking risks is tricky. You should never do anything that's dangerous or something that breaks the law. But God would not be pleased with that. But you will find that there are times when you need to take a risk in order to do something that would please God. One time when I had to take a risk for God, it was I had a friend that I really enjoyed hanging out with. Although I knew that she wasn't a Christian and she didn't believe in God. And I didn't know if she had ever heard about God or not. And so I had to make a choice if I was going to tell her about God or not. I was kind of scared that if I told her about it, she wouldn't like me anymore or we would stop being friends. But I decided that the risk was worth it. And so I told her about Jesus and what I believed and how to become saved. And even though she didn't become saved that day, Um, I'm sure that it planted a seed in her heart. And we still were friends and we still hung out on occasion, but that time she did not accept Christ. And I don't really know if she ever accepted Christ or not, but letting her know that she has the option to know Christ was totally worth it. Let's read Philippians 4, 10 through 13 together. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord, and at last you renewed my concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content in whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. I can do all things this through him who gives me strength. Paul took a lot of risk for God. In this letter, Paul is telling his friends that he trusts God in everything. Because he trusts God, he knows that he'll help him with whatever he is facing. This passage reminds me of a song. Why don't we stand up and sing together, okay? Philippians 4, 12 and 13. Did 
situation Whether well-fed or hungry Whether living in plenty or in want Living in plenty or in want Here we go! I can do everything Through Him who gives me strength I can do everything our Bible verse. 1 Samuel 12 24. Repeat after me. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Great job guys. I had such a wonderful time learning with you guys today. I hope to see you next week as we continue our epic adventure together.